Welcome to episode 17 of the Wood Whisperer video podcast. I'm your host Mark Spagnolo, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own vacuum bag for your veneer press. Now last time I showed you how to cut your own veneer, and when you make big wide sheets of veneer like this, you need an effective way to get even clamping pressure along the entire surface. The best way to do this by far is with a vacuum press. Now in its most basic form, a vacuum press consists of a sealable plastic bag, a board with grooves cut in it so that the air can escape, and a pump which sucks out all of the air from the inside of the bag. Now you simply place your veneer and glue sandwich inside the bag, you seal it up, and then turn on the pump. Now by removing all the air, we're actually creating a vacuum. And this means that atmospheric pressure is now applying 14.7 pounds per square inch. That's a lot of pressure and it's more than enough for the purposes of veneering. Now there's one resource that I count on time and time again when it comes to vacuum press veneering, and that's joewoodworker.com. You can buy everything there, pumps, pre-made bags, bag material, and even full kits. But perhaps the coolest part of all is that if you're the DIY type, Joe provides all the information and the materials that you need to build your own system from start to finish. And since I'm a DIY kind of guy and I'm cheap, I'm going to make my own bag using the tutorial on Joe's site. Now there are two primary materials that you can choose from when shopping for bag material. There's polyurethane and vinyl. Now you could read more about the differences between these two materials on Joe's site, but let me make it simple for you. Polyurethane is more durable and flexible, but it's also more expensive. Vinyl, on the other hand, is a bit less durable, but it costs less. Now, my first bag here was made from vinyl, and it's still in perfect condition after three years. But since the prices of polyurethane have come down significantly, I'll be using polyurethane for my new bag. Now, I want my bag to be roughly four foot wide by six foot long. So I bought a roll of poly that's about four yards long and four and a half feet wide. This way, when I fold it in half, I'll have a rough size of four by six. So before we jump in, let's review the tools we'll need. We'll need a marker, vinyl cement, an abrasive pad, a seam roller, a utility knife, a long steel rule, and acetone. I start the process by completely unfolding the sheet of poly on my assembly table. I then fold the sheet in half. It's important to make sure that the sides line up perfectly. I need a little extra room to work, so I move the whole sheet back a bit, but I need to use quick clamps to stop the poly from falling off of the table. Now I need to draw a line 4 inches from the edge. The easiest way to do this is to use two metal rules. Each one is 2 inches wide, so there's no measuring involved. Using a line and a steel rule as guides, I cut through both layers of poly using a utility knife. Notice that I'm using a piece of scrap ply as a backer so that I don't cut into my tabletop. When it's all said and done, you should be left with a very long 4 inch strip. Next, I cut the 4 inch strip exactly in half. Now we can use one strip to seal up each side of the bag but that's a few steps ahead. Now I mark a line two inches in from the folded edge of the bag. I then flip the end over and draw a line in the same spot on the other side. Now when I unfold the bag again, I have two lines representing the area where I need to spread the glue. Whenever gluing a joint, we'll use the same exact process. It starts with a light acetone scrub using our abrasive pad. This removes the surface oils and scratches the surface a bit, giving the glue something to grab onto. Be sure to use a respirator, eye protection, and gloves throughout this entire gluing process. The glue is a clear liquid that spreads easily. I just brush on a nice even layer trying to stay within the lines. With the help of a friend, carefully fold the bag in half. Use the lines as a guide, and once your lines match up, you can press the pieces together.
and then use a seam roller to ensure a good bond. Now I need to clamp the freshly glued edge between two boards and let it cure for 24 hours. This step is only necessary if you're gluing up a poly bag. With vinyl, I would wait about an hour after using the seam tool. After 24 hours, I release the bag from the clamps. The joint should be nice and flat now. Now with the bag clamped to the table again, I can begin working on one of the sides. I draw another line, two inches in from the edge. Looks like it's acetone time again. I clean the entire edge up to my line, as well as one of the sides of the four inch strip. I then spread glue over the edge staying behind the line. I also spread glue on the front half of the 4 inch strip. I didn't bother drawing a guideline for this one. When gluing up a polyurethane bag, it's imperative that the two glue surfaces be wet when they come in contact. This is actually something that I learned after the fact. Once again, I use the seam roller to create a nice secure bond. I then flip the bag over, clean the surface with acetone, spread the glue, fold over the flap, and use the seam roller. Once again, the fresh joint gets clamped for 24 hours. The entire process is then repeated for the other side of the bag. The final step is to install a valve stem. Unfortunately, I lost this footage because of a bad tape, but this is what it looks like and it's very easy to install. Just cut a small hole, put the valve through and tighten the nuts. And now for a quick test run. I slide in a panel, seal up the bag, and connect the pump. After the air is completely evacuated, I turn off the pump and listen for leaks. Wherever I find one, I simply drop a little vinyl adhesive on the spot, and the suction will pull the glue in and plug the leak. Okay, so here's the deal. The bag didn't turn out like I expected. Now if you look closely, you'll see that the bond doesn't really look like it's tight at all. I tried filling the leaks, but unfortunately, no matter what I do, the bag is leaky. Now it still works, but I've got to leave my pump on constantly or else it won't hold the proper pressure. Now having made my own vinyl bag in the past using Joe's instructions, I was pretty confident going into this project. But the fact of the matter is, this polyurethane material acts quite differently than the vinyl. Instead of working like contact cement, this adhesive partially absorbs into the poly and causes it to curl. So by the time I was at the end of my run, my pieces were curling like potato chips and the glue was nearly dry. Now the key with this material is to get your pieces together while the glue is still wet. I found this to be pretty darn tricky and to be completely honest with you, I don't think it's worth the hassle. Like most of you, I'm by no means a vacuum bag expert, but I certainly felt competent enough to glue up my own bag and save a few bucks. So what's my verdict? Well, if I ever need another bag and I want to glue up my own, I'm definitely going to use vinyl instead of poly. And I know the poly's more durable, but my vinyl bag has done well for over two years without a single leak, and it was really easy to assemble using this exact process. But more likely than not, I'll probably just buy a pre-made bag from joewoodworker.com. So things didn't exactly turn out as expected, but that's exactly why I do this show. I'm not here to sugarcoat the truth and edit out the bad stuff. The real point here is for you to see this process in action, pitfalls and all, and then you can decide for yourself if you want to give it a shot. And whether you plan on making the bag yourself or buying a pre-made one, be sure to check out joewoodworker.com. And if you're interested in making your own vacuum setup, you can find all the information and the materials there too. In fact, joewoodworker.com is one of those sites that you can lose yourself in for about a day or two, so consider yourself warned. As always, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to contact us at thewoodwhisperer at gmail.com. 
And if you plan on doing some shopping at Amazon.com, why not go through the Wood Whisperer store first? All your purchases will help to benefit the show, and it won't cost you a penny more. So, until next time, Saki to me. For your viewing pleasure, I've included an uncut, sped up clip of me gluing up one of the sides. First off, I think I need a larger brush. Even with a larger brush, I'd find it very difficult to get these pieces together while the glue was still wet, and before the poly starts to curl like crazy. As I mentioned before, this isn't much of an issue with vinyl. Now at this point in the video, it's a good thing you can't see my face because I'm pretty much freaking out. The fact that it was curling like this was totally unexpected and I had no idea how to deal with it. So I just did the best I could and rolled the seam. Now I'm sure there are many things I could have done to make this all go smoother, but I think my experience is a fair representation of what the average person would confront. So choose wisely when selecting your bag.